it took me way too long to play through the entire Xenosaga series. I played the first two in the past but didn't have access to the third which disappointed me big time all those years ago. Better late than never I guess because the Xenosaga series truly is something special and is one of the highlights on the PS2 system. If you don't mind playing through a trilogy which at times feels like watching a multi-season TV series, then Xenosaga really is a must-play RPG series. It is an absolute crime that there is no HD remake. The more I progressed through this series, the more I was longing for one. I just feel bad that modern audiences may never get a chance to see what Xenosaga is all about. The final title, which translates to Thus Spoke Zarathustra, is my favourite in the series and its epic story is something that will be on my mind for a while. Now, let's dig into what makes Xenosaga Episode 3 so great. While all released in the space of about 4 years, the visual and audio style of the series has changed big time. Graphically, the series started as an anime style and then evolved into a more realistic style in Xenosaga 2 which I wasn't really a fan of mainly due to the odd looking character models. This time the series has matured once again into something far superior than anything we've previously seen. The realistic character models all look amazing and the environments have hit a new level of detail which provides loads of atmosphere for the many different types of locations that you'll visit in the game. Not only this, but some of the original voice cast also make a return. No longer do we have some of the monotonal, annoying character voices that plagued Xenosaga 2. Now we have some of the originals that sounded amazing. The soundtrack also took a turn for the better, with most of the tracks perfectly filling their purpose. There were so many tracks that really helped highlight the mood of the moment, and I would even go as far to say that it's as good if not better than the first soundtrack. It took three games to get to this point, but the Xenosaga trilogy goes out looking and sounding amazing. After watching dozens of hours worth of story heavy cutscenes from the first two episodes, I was ready for the finale. I could not wait to see how this crazy story focused trilogy concluded. Xenosaga 3 takes place one year after the second episode. Quite a lot happened during this time period and while it is briefly explained, it should be noted that Namco did release a 6 part Japanese exclusive flash series to help fill in the gaps. An English translation of this is available on YouTube so I'll post a link in the description. Anyway. This epic story is the number one reason that you're going to want to play through the Xenosaga series. However, trying to explain what the hell is going on just wouldn't do it justice. In fact, my brain would probably explode from over confusion if I tried to explain everything. The story delivery is consistently good this time, and while there are far less actual cutscenes which are mainly reserved for the key action packed moments, the majority of the story is told through text boxes with full voiceovers. These text boxes also feature an image of the character and this really helps show the emotion as the character's expressions change depending on the situation. Personally, I am a big fan of sitting back and watching cutscenes just like a movie, but I honestly didn't mind this change at all. The dialogue was always interesting and as I mentioned before, the voice acting was spot on. On. They save the best till last. Xenosaga 3 is bigger and better than ever before with some insane moments and crazy plot twists that just made my mind go boom. Very few video games have had a plot as complex and as deep as this and I feel it would take many playthroughs and external research to fully grasp everything on offer. Fortunately there is a massive database of terms this time around and reading up on all of the characters, terminology and lore was very interesting and absolutely necessary given how confusing things can get. Xenosaga 2's combat received a bit of a backlash due to its complexity and repetitive nature. Xenosaga 3 takes things in an entirely new direction than the first two presenting a simple yet effective turn based system. Each turn the active character can perform a basic attack or spend EP on a tech attack or an ether spell. This is pretty straightforward and a common strategy usually involves buffs and debuffs and exploiting the enemy's weaknesses. There's also the new feature of being able to break the enemy. With enough break attacks the enemy will eventually be immobile mobilized for a couple of turns, allowing you to inflict massive damage for a little while. For this reason, you may want to focus on weaker break attacks rather than the more powerful attacks that won't break the enemy. The boost system also makes a return, but it now has a secondary use. Like the previous games, if you have boost points, you can use them to give your characters an extra turn whenever you want. This time, in addition to this, you can also spend boost points to unleash special attacks which deal massive damage. And if you kill an enemy with a special attack, you'll also receive more EXP and skill points after the battle, so it pays off to use them strategically. The one thing that I really missed was the event slots from the previous games. I felt that this was a staple of the Xenosaga system as 
because it had a huge influence on when to unleash your attacks. But at the end of the day, while the combat system is a lot simpler than the previous systems, it results in faster battles and an overall less frustrating system. I give it the thumbs up. If you're new to the series, ES is a giant mech that you can fight in. In Xenosaga 3, the ES battles have also had a complete overhaul. Some dungeons will require you to jump into your ESs and take on larger enemies. Based on what you have equipped to each ES, you can perform a series of attacks that take up various amounts of energy. For instance, if you have 500 energy per turn, you could unleash two attacks that take up 250 energy each, or just a single attack that would take up 400 energy. There are many different types of attacks with different strengths and weaknesses to consider as well as combo attacks that can be performed if an attack has a high enough team value. There's also the anima gauge which fills up after attacking an enemy several times and this both increases the stats of your ES and allows you to unleash super powerful attacks. Like the regular combat system, the ES battles are quite simple, but this time around they are by far more refined and enjoyable than anything else the series has given us. If there was one addition I would have liked here, it would be the ability to switch your ES with one of the standby units at any time. In the game, the only way you can switch is if an ES loses all of its hit points, which takes it out for the rest of the battle. The limited character customization was a huge criticism of Xenosaga Episode 2. Thankfully, Episode 3 bounces back with the brand new skill line system that provides some level of choice in how you build your characters. And by some level, I mean two. There are exactly two paths that each character can take with the deeper skills requiring more skill points. These skill lines provide your characters with new tech attacks, new other skills and stat increases. Additionally, there are various items hidden around the world that unlock new learnable skills and this is a nice way to further customize your party. I think my favorite part about this is that all characters in your party earn EXP and skill points in battle. This was a massive issue in the first two games where only the three members that finish up in battle will receive the points. This new system ensures that all characters will always be viable in battle without making the lesser used characters unviable options. It's also worth noting that shops and character equipment makes a return. Buying and finding new equipment and accessories for your characters and ESs and equipping the ones that suit your playstyle was something that was sorely missed in episode 2. Aside from playing through the majorly complex story, there are quite a few other things to do in Xenosaga Episode 3. There are several side quests around the place and once again the segment doors make a return, both of which require a bit of backtracking to previously visited locations. My favourite new addition is the minigame Hakox. Episode 1 provided us with some amazing minigames and Hakox is just as good. Basically, it's a puzzle game that requires you to guide your characters to their destination mainly through moving cubes and altering the speed that they move. It may sound simple, but some of the 60 levels require a lot of strategy and great timing and I had a lot of fun working my way through each of the challenges. The best thing is there's actually a decent reward for completing them, which was not the case in episode 1. What did you think of a cox? Did you give it a good go? Let me know in the comments. Well, it took me a long time to find the time to play through the entire Xenosaga series, I can finally say that I've completed this epic trilogy. Honestly, Xenosaga is awesome in so many different ways and these games are definitely among my favourite RPGs on the PS2. While there were a few bumps along the way, particularly in Episode 2, I could not have asked for a better way to finish things off. Episode 3 is the best in the series and was exactly what I wanted to finish up this story heavy trilogy. I've said it before, but here we go again. The story is the best thing about Xenosaga. There is a lot going on and while it may be overly complex at times, I have a huge appreciation for the heavy lore and many memorable characters. I was so happy to see a massive bounce back in terms of the audio and visual design. Many of the original voice actors are back, the soundtrack is outstanding and the character models and environments have all improved for the better. The game also hits its peak with the gameplay. While the battles are simpler than they have been in the past, for the most part they were a big improvement. The same goes for the ES battles which for the first time in the series I actually enjoyed. To put it simply, Xenosaga Episode 3 is amazing and one of the best RPGs on the system. I think the whole build up to it is what made it so special. The series has had some rough patches but the way everything ended was near perfect. If you like JRPGs and don't mind the fact that you'll be kicking up your feet and watching things unfold 
Blofeld, then the Xenosaga Trilogy is a must play. There's always a hope for a HD remaster, even if it won't be happening anytime soon. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching this review. Which Xenosaga title did you like the most? Let me know in the comments. Stay tuned for some Xenosaga Know The Facts coming soon, where we'll look at all of the things that you didn't know about the series. See you next time.